In our video today, we're going to be doing a couple of things within Amazon Web Services again. We'll actually do uh, probably three different things in this video. Step one, we're going to create an EC2 instance running a flavor of Unix. Step two, we will connect to that instance after it's created using SSH. And step three, we will apply the appropriate updates to that Unix image that we created to ensure uh, we have the, the latest security patches and other patches that may have been applied to that specific flavor of Unix that we're running. While creating an EC2 instance is fairly straightforward, as a non-Unix administrator, it's always confused me a little bit around how you go about connecting to that using the credentials that you established when you created the EC2 instance, and then finally, how you go about applying any appropriate patches to that. And as I've played around with this in the past, I've realized it's not nearly as complicated as it, as it may sound. And as long as you have some limited technical knowledge, you can easily create and connect and apply the various patches. And we'll explore all of that in our video today. The first thing we'll want to do is log into our uh, AWS Management Council. And if you don't have an account, it's, it's fairly straightforward to set up. And the nice thing about it is it won't really cost you anything. You have a year from the time you create your, your account to uh, run some limited AWS services and it, it won't cost you anything. It's a, it's a trial period for you to play around with things. Uh, if you do have an account and you've been running uh, AWS for a while, uh, the cost isn't overly expensive and I've got a video that details some of the costs related to EC2 and you can go check that out. Click on the uh, uh, card in the upper right hand corner there and you, you can see that video. So let's get into creating a Unix server in the cloud using EC2. First thing we'll want to be at is our uh, AWS Management Council and you can see here these are the services that I've recently been playing around with. Uh, you may or may not have anything up here. If you don't, you can find EC2 under the compute header here. So click on EC2 and we'll, this will take you to the EC2 dashboard. And from here, you can uh, have a quick look into how many instances we're running, which you can see I've got zero instances running right now. Snapshots maybe that you've created, elastic IP addresses. And again, I've got some videos out there on both how you create a snapshot, how you can establish uh, an elastic IP address, and uh, security groups that you've established, volumes that you've created, and so forth. We want to create an instance right now. So what we're going to do here in the middle of the page is click on Launch Instance. And this will take you to step one uh, which is choosing an Amazon machine image. So if you're standing up a server, you want something, an operating system to be running on that server. And there are a lot of different options here for you to select from. Uh, in our case, our, our quick start here has uh, some various Unix servers, Windows servers, uh, and some variety of other things if you scroll down through the list. You can go to the, click on the AWS Marketplace tab here, and uh, you, it, it'll give you other pieces of software that you could uh, run on your server. Uh, broken out by category down here also gives you the option to do a, a quick search if you're looking for something specific. And it'll give it'll break down the cost of of running things. So if you want to run um, uh, a Juniper Firewall uh, costs you about 55 cents an hour, $2,200 a year if you go that route. Uh, so just be cognizant of the costs associated with, with the different machine images that you will install on your server. We want to go to the quick start, back to our quick start guide. And in our case here, we will go with the 
uh, Amazon Linux AMI or Amazon machine image. And you can see here it is free tier eligible, free tier eligible. Uh, and that will tell you if you're uh, setting up an account for the first time and you're within that first year, it won't cost you anything. And each of the various operating systems or machine images that you install will tell you whether or not they're free tier el eligible. So you can see here if you stand up uh, Windows Server 2016 with SQL Server 2017 Express, it's not free tier eligible, so you would pay for that. Uh, back up to the top here, let's select our Amazon Linux AMI. And in step two, we are going to we are going to select the type of server we want to stand up. And if you scroll through the list, there are a number of servers that that you can use. And the 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 the, the bigger the server, the more you pay. It's that's the easiest way of looking at it. You can see here the one server that they have, the T2 Micro, is free tier eligible. Uh, the others are not. So if you're in that first year, make sure you select this one and it'll tell you some details around it. In our case here, we've got one virtual CPU. We've got one gig of memory. Uh, it'll tell you the uh, type of storage that you get with it, the, the performance um, you can expect. And if we just kind of scroll down the list, compare compare the T2 micro to the T2 T2 large you can see the large will give us two CPU CPUs with eight gig of memory uh, compared to one and one so quite a substantial difference just remember the bigger the server you stand up the more you'll pay in our case we will go with the T2 micro that is more than sufficient for us and come down here to click on configure instance details and you won't need to, to change anything here we just want one instance um, we can leave everything else as is shutdown behavior will stop it um, yeah we'll, we'll just leave that click on the next add storage so we can add a a disk drive to it if you will and again this will tell you the size where we'll have a, an eight gigabyte volume that we're attaching to this uh, the different types of of storage that you want and we can just leave everything at at the defaults here and if you ever want more information just click on the little or you don't even hover over the little information block up here and it'll tell you a little bit a little bit more about things so we'll leave things as is here next we can add a tag to it and this is a key value pair this is optional and you don't need to add a tag but if you do want to just to help uh, I guess classify it you can do that so if we want to add a tag here we'll call the key name and the value will be uh, Unix server how about that click on the next configure security group step and this is where we will uh, create a, a new security group for for our server and and the security group allows us to uh, basically connect to that server down in the the second part here it gives us some rules in order to connect to things and you can if you click on the the little drop down here these are the different ports that'll be on the server and whether you want those ports open or closed in our case we want to uh, have an SSH port opened um, and right now it's open to everyone we'll leave this as is since it's just a test server but if you're if you're using this for uh, call it a production type of thing you'll want to ensure that you lock it down and you can lock it down 
to default to your specific IP or add uh, an IP range in there. Last step, let's do a click on the review and launch. And this will give us some additional details on our server and it gives you a little security alert up here that says uh, your security group launch wizard three is open to the world. I'm aware of that. Uh, and like it says, your instances may be accessible from any IP address. And this just goes back to what I explained in the earlier step here. You uh, really want to lock that down to your specific IP so, so other folks can't, can't access this. And if you scroll down through the page, it'll give us our, uh, uh, an overview of what we're establishing here. So a T2 micro incidents with EBS storage on it, our security group, and instant details, storage, and tags. So we've got all of this set up. Click on the launch icon, launch button, I should say. And the last thing we want to do is ensure that we have the credentials we need to log into that server. If you don't do this, you won't be able to access your server from outside of, of Amazon. So we'll wanna make sure that we do this. In our case here, and you've got some, some little drop downs, you can choose an existing key pair. We wanna create a new key pair Key pair name is our test Unix server, and you can give it any name that you want. And if you notice down here, it's telling you you have to download the private key file, this .pem file, before you can continue. And this is the only place you can do that. So if you don't do this here, you won't be able to do it anywhere else, and you'll never be able to access your server via SSH. So let's make sure we do that. Download key pair. And that was downloaded to my local computer here. And we will launch our instance. And this will take a little bit for it to be created. And you can see your instances are now launching and it gives you some resources on how you wanna go about or what you can do to go about accessing that instance. And if we click our blue button down here to view instances, this will take us back to our EC2 dashboard. You can see our Unix server here that we're standing up or T2 micro instance. It is in a running state and it's going through some initialization checks right now to ensure that it's, that it's running. And if you look down in the, the bottom box here, it will give us the IP address of that server that we can access. So that's all we really need to do to create an EC2 instance running Amazon's flavor of You'll want to let the initialization checks finish up here, which will take probably no more than, than a few minutes. And once that's done, we can go about accessing that server. In our next video, we'll explore exactly what you need to do to access the Linux server that we just created using SSH. Once we've accessed that server, we will apply the uh, any appropriate updates or security patches to the Linux machine image that we just installed so we can ensure we have uh, the latest and greatest operating system running.